Praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, everybody. Come on, let's stand up on our feet and give praise to God. Come on, come on. Hallelujah. 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 The Bible says, let everything that have breath praise ye the Lord. Hallelujah. What's the highest praise on tonight? Come on, come on. What's the highest praise on tonight? I want to hear you say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, hallelujah. Welcome to our third night of revival. Hallelujah. Anybody looking to be revived on tonight? Come on, anybody really looking to be revived on tonight? Hallelujah. I believe the whole song says revive us again. Hallelujah. I want to be revived again. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Oh, everybody say this together. Revive us again. Hallelujah. Amen, amen. Anybody want to trade in some things on tonight? I'm talking about trading in some sorrow, trading in some pain, and then we're going to lay it down for the joy of the Lord. Hallelujah. Come on, put your hands together like this. I'm trading my sorrows, and I'm trading in my pain. I'm gonna lay it down for the joy of the Lord. Yeah, 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 yes, I am, and I'm trading in my sickness. I'm gonna trade in my pain. I'm gonna lay it, I'm gonna lay it, I'm gonna lay it down for the joy of the Lord. Can we say that together tonight? I'm trading my sorrow. I'm trading my pain. I'm trading my pain. I'm trading my sickness. Let's trade in some pain. I'm trading my pain. Let's lay it down. I'm laying for the down joy, for the joy of the Lord. Can I say the first one time? I am pressed but not crushed, persecuted and not abandoned. I've been struck down, but I'm not destroyed. I am blessed beyond the curse. For his promise will endure That God's joy is gonna be my strength And though the sorrows may last for a night God's joy comes in the morning And I'm trading my sorrow Trading my strength I'm trading my pain Lay it down I'm laying for the it joy, down for the joy of the Lord I'm trading my sickness. Trading my pain. I'm trading my pain. I'm laying it down for the joy of the Lord. I think I'll say the verse one more time. I am pressed but not crushed. Persecuted and not abandoned. Struck down but not destroyed. I am blessed beyond the curse. For God's promise will endure. His joy is gonna be my strength. And though the sorrows may last for one night, God's joy comes in the morning. And I'm trading my sorrow. Trading my shame. I'm trading my shame. I'm laying it down. I'm laying for the it down joy. for the joy of the Lord. Come on, let's trade in some sickness tonight. I'm trading my sickness. Some pain. I'm trading my pain. Let's lay it down. I'm laying for the joy, the joy of the Lord. I dare you to turn to your neighbor right now and say good morning to them. The Bible says that joy comes in the morning, right? Right? The Bible says that joy comes in the morning. And the morning isn't necessarily 
when there is a p.m. after it, but the morning is when you wake up. And I believe tonight some of us, our eyes are going to be awakened on tonight. Some of our spirits will be awakened on tonight. And so I dare you to look at your neighbor and say, joy is here, wake up. Come on, turn to him. Joy is here, wake up. Say, joy is here. Joy is here, wake up. Say joy is here. Joy is here. Wake up. Say joy is here. Joy is here. Oh yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, yes, Lord. Amen. Come on, let's give a yes tonight. Come on. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, 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 Lord. 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 Yes, yes, Lord. Amen. Let's do it again. Say yes, Lord. 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 Yes, yes, Lord. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Joy is here, wake up. Say joy is here. Joy is here, wake up. Say joy is here. Joy is here, wake up. Say peace is here. Peace is here, wake up. 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 Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord, amen. Let's give God a yes tonight. Come on, come on, come on. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord, 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 yes, yes, Lord, amen. Come on. Say yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes. Say yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes. Say yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, yes, Lord. Amen. Can we take it up a little bit higher? Say yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes. Say yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes. I will give you a yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, yes, Lord. Amen. Everybody in the building say yes Lord. Yes, Lord. yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, yes, Lord. Amen. Come on, let's just put our hands together right here. When we put our hands together, we confuse the enemy. Amen. Let's confuse the enemy on tonight. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord, amen. One last time, say yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. Say yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. Oh, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord, amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We give you a yes on tonight, God. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Last night the preacher talked about leaving the wine press, leaving that place of hiding and going to the altar. Amen. So I dare you right where you are just to build an altar wherever you are right now. Even in the airways, even watching from your car, build an altar right where you are, amen. Oh, oh. 
So are you hurting and broken within? Overwhelmed by the weight of your sin? Jesus is calling. And have you come to the end of yourself? Do you thirst for a drink from the well? Jesus is calling. Oh, come to the altar. Your Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness is born with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. How many know that God purchased your sins way back on Calvary? Amen. Oh, so are you hurting and broken within? Are you overwhelmed by the weight of your sin? Jesus is calling. And have you come to the end of yourself? Do you thirst for a drink from the well? Jesus is calling. Say, oh, come, oh, come to the altar, the altar, the Father's arms, the Father's arms, yes. and forgiveness, forgiveness was bought with, was bought with the, precious blood. the precious blood of oh. Jesus. Say, oh, come, oh, come to the altar, the, altar, the Father's arms, the Father's arms, the and forgiveness, forgiveness was bought with, was bought with the, precious blood. the precious blood. I said, oh, what a Savior. Isn't God wonderful? I'll sing hallelujah. God is risen. I'm going to bow down before you, for you are wonderful. I'll sing hallelujah, Christ is risen. Anybody believe that tonight? Let's say it. Oh, what a Savior. Isn't he wonderful? Isn't he wonderful? Sing hallelujah. Hallelujah! Christ is Christ is risen. That's it. Bow down before Bow Him. Bow down before Him. For He's wonderful. For He is wonderful. Sing Hallelujah. Sing Hallelujah. Christ is Christ is risen. See you. To bow down before him, for he is wonderful. Sing hallelujah, Christ is risen. So come to the altar. Your Father's arms are open wide And forgiveness was bought with The precious blood of Jesus Christ Oh, come to the altar Your Father's arms are open wide And forgiveness was bought with the precious blood of can we say that tonight come on oh come, come to the altar the altar your father's arms your father's arms are open and forgiveness, forgiveness was bought with was bought with the precious
precious blood, the precious blood of Jesus. Say, oh, come, oh, come to the altar, the altar, the altar your father's arms, and open. forgiveness, forgiveness was brought with, was brought with oh, the precious blood of Jesus. The I dare you in this place to just worship God in your own kind of way. Hallelujah. Worship God in your own kind of way. The song says that your blood, he bought your blood, right? The sins that you committed, he purchased them with his blood. The shedding of his blood, he purchased your sins. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, 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 oh. I feel this song in my spirit. Praise is what I do when I want to be close to you. Lord, I lift my hands in praise. Oh, and praise is who I am. Lord, I will praise you while I can. Lord, I'll bless you at all time. I want y'all to sing. I know you know it. Come on, say through the good and the bad. Through the good and the bad. Say, I'll praise you. I'll praise you. Say, whether I'm happy or I'm sad. Whether happy or sad. Say, God, I'll praise you. I'll praise you. Say, Lord, in all that I go through. In all that I go through. Say, because praise. Because praise. Oh, I do. Come on. Ooh. Lord, I owe it all. This is my favorite part. Praise is what I do. Ooh. Oh, it's what I do. Come on, come on, let's lift it up to Jesus on tonight. Praise is what I do. Is it what you do on tonight? Is it what you do on tonight? It's what I do. Come on, let's lift it up to the Father on tonight. Say praise is what I do. Praise is what I do. It's what I do. It's what I do. It's what I do. Let's send up a praise over to Afghanistan on tonight. Let's send up a praise to Africa on tonight. It's what I do. I dare you to send a praise to your house on tonight. You got some family members that didn't make it to service on tonight. Lift up a praise for them on tonight. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Say praise is what I do. Do. Lord, I praise you through the good times, and I praise you through the bad. Praise is what I do. Ooh, oh, oh, it's what I do. Right in this space, and praise is really what you do. Go ahead and do what you said that you do. If praise is really who you are, give God your best praise on tonight. Come on, come on. I said we're here in revival. We came to be revived on tonight. We came to be revived on tonight. God revive us with our praise. God revive us with our worship on tonight. God revive us when we shabbat you on tonight. God revive us every time we call on your name. 
God, revive us tonight. Revive us tonight, God. Revive us tonight, God. Encourage us, God. Make us who you want us to be. Not who we want to be, but who you want us to be tonight, God. God, we praise you. God, we worship you. God, we magnify you. Because praise is what we do. Praise is who we are. Praise is who we are. We were created in your likeness and in your image. You created us to praise you. You created us to praise you. You created us to praise you. I open up my mouth. I lift up my hands to give you praise on tonight. It's what I do. For the last time, I want everybody all over the building to stand up on your feet. Praise is what I do. Come on, come on, come on. Lift it up to your father tonight. Say, it's what I do. It's what I do. Yeah. Come on, say, praise is what I do. Praise is what I do. Some praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Um, praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. I know y'all could do better than that. All right. Um, I can have everybody bow their heads. Um, get ready for prayer. Please stand, if you can. Uh, Lord, I just, we just want to come to you on night, Lord God, to give you praise, Lord God, and thanks, Lord God for everything, Lord God, for traveling mercies, Lord God, for allowing us to get here safely, Lord God, for allowing those that are on their way, Lord God, to get here safely, Lord God, for allowing people to be able to come, Lord God, Lord God, for the message we're about to receive, Lord God, put a word in the in the, pop, the man of God, Lord God, allow him to preach, Lord God, Lord God, allow him to deliver a powerful message, Lord God, allow more souls to be saved, Lord God, Lord God, deliver them, Lord God, Lord God, and Lord God, I ask you, Lord God, Lord God, to deliver the word, Lord God, in Jesus' name, I pray, amen. Praise the Lord, everybody.
I'm reading from Psalms 27, 1. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is my strength of my light. Who shall I be afraid? May the blessing of the word. Praise the Lord, everybody. Uh, welcome to the Carpenter's House. Of, I mean, welcome to the Carpenter's House, Baltimore. Feel free. You're not you're not treated as a guest here. You're treated as family. So free. Feel free to praise and worship here. Amen. At this time, we're going to call up the youth choir. At this time, Amen. Amen. And the theme for our revival is preparing for the race. Amen. Preparing for the race. And we want to win. Amen. When we're running for Jesus, we don't want to just be in the race, but we want to win the race. Amen. We always, we always win. We always win. Say no matter what the circumstance, we always win. Say we always win. We always win. Say no matter what may come my way, we always win. Let's do it again. We always win. We always win. Say no matter what may come my way, we always win. Say we always win. Say we always win. Say no matter what may come my way, we always win.
this is uh, my testimony. Um, my name is Chance, Chance Clayton. <laughs> um, so about last year, um, October, uh, I was well, like late October. I was um, I got very sick and um, I went to the hospital for about a week. Um, so what was going on was um, I had an abscess on my liver. So it's like, you know, um, they did all kinds of like MRIs and things like that. Um, but the doctors, no one knew where they came from. Um, when they said like how young I am, it was like, um, it's rare to see that for my age and for anybody because people don't usually get it. Um, and so once they found out that I had it, um, I was in there and I was taking medicine for it. And about the last day, no, it was about the second to last day, um, I was, they put a, a line in my arm. So I was able to, to get medicine to, so they can treat me for medicine. So um, I was released the next day. So I went home. Um, and when I went home, I was taking the medicine. Um, and about a week later, uh, about a week or two later, um, I got really sick again. Like, but so what? What we think? Um, it was gone before, before the doctor said it was gonna be gone. Um, so. And so um, I got really sick again, and so I had to go back into the hospital. And they did the test again, and it was like it's not there. And it was and the doctor was like, it's a, it's like they said it was a miracle because it was supposed to be there for weeks. It was only there for about a week. Um. So after that, they was like, um. The reason why I got really sick again is because the medicine it was the medicine wasn't it wasn't healing nothing no more. It wasn't treating nothing no more. So it was like it was killing my white blood cells. So I went there and I was taking off the medicine and all the other medicines I was on. And so um I came out of the hospital and they well they took the, the line on my arm and you know, I've been I've been good since then. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. At this time, we're going to call up the TCHB choir at this time. Regular choir and the youth choir, everybody, come on. Anybody know God to be worthy on tonight? Come on, let's put our hands together. It's an oldie but a goodie. Well, Lord, you're worthy, and we give you, Lord, you're worthy, and we give you, say so you're always making a way, and we give you, Lord, you're worthy, oh yes you are, and we give you, hey, put your hands together like this.
Let's say it one more time. Lord, you're worthy. Lord, you're worthy. And we give you. And we give you the praise. Lord, you're worthy. Oh, yes, you are. And we give you. And we give you the praise. You're always making a way. And we give you. Lord, you're worthy. Oh, and we give you. Put those hands together right now. Lord, you're faithful. Lord, faithful. And we give you. And we give you the praise. Lord, you're faithful. Lord, faithful. And we give you. And we give you the praise. you're always making a way. Always making a way. And we give you. And we give you the praise. Lord, you're faithful. Lord, faithful. And we give you. And we give you the praise. Put your hands together right now. Lord, you're faithful. Lord, we're faithful. And we give you. And we give you the praise. Lord, you're faithful. Lord, we're faithful. And we give you. And we give you. I said you're always making a way. Always making a way. And we give you. And we give you the praise. Lord, you're faithful. Lord, we're faithful. And we give you. And we give you. Oh, say faithful. 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 And we give you. Say faithful, 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 and we give you. Say faithful, faithful, and we give you. Say faithful, faithful, and we give you. Say holy, holy, 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 and we give you. Say faithful, 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 Say faithful, 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 Say holy, holy, say holy, holy. Say holy, holy, say holy, say holy, say righteous, 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 righteous. Say holy, 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 say righteous, 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 say righteous, 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 say healer, healer, say healer. Healer. Anybody know him to be a healer? Anybody know him to be a healer? Say faithful, holy, faithful, worthy. Say faithful, 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 faithful. Oh Lord, you're worthy. Lord, you're worthy. And we give you, and we give you the
know the Lord is blessing me right now come on just lift those hands right there where you are and shout the Lord is blessing me right now I sing it this way the Lord has been so good to me the Lord has been so good to me the Lord has been so good to me that's all it is the Lord has been so good to me the Lord has been so good to me the Lord has been so good to me my four men that received the baptism of the Holy Ghost Yesterday, I want you to come and join me on the, on the stage tonight. Amen. 
Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. These four men testified last night of God filling them with the power of the Holy Ghost. Speaking in other tongues as the Spirit of God gave them the utterance. And as I saw little Keyshawn uh, uh, working, Christoph, I'm sorry, working and grabbing mics and putting mics up, I said, who gave him that job? Uh, it seems like he said, I got the Holy Ghost. I can work now. Hallelujah. God bless you, son. God bless you. God bless you. Let's, uh, I'm just going to let them, because uh, we had to get off the air last night, and many of y'all didn't get a chance to see what happened. Service just got started when we went off the air. That's what usually happens over here. When we go off the air, it doesn't mean service has ended. That means we're about to turn it up. Hallelujah. Look at your neighbor and say, turn down for what? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The devil is turning it up. We need, to, hallelujah, to turn it up greater than what the devil is turning it up. Hallelujah. And we stayed in here last night, and this wonderful man of God labored with these young people. The intercessors labored with the young people, and they came through with the mighty burning fire, the tongue-talking Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Nobody took them in the back room and taught them how to speak. I ain't bothering with you now. Hallelujah. But while the man of God was prophesying, I saw the Holy Ghost just sweep through the room. started over here, then it bounced over here, then it bounced over there, then it bounced all of a sudden, looked like a tsunami had hit the room. Uh, hallelujah. I'm reminded what they said in the upper room, they said, and it sat upon each of them. Look at your neighbor, say you're in the right place at the right time. Now, now every now and then you need to get a room check and find out who you're sitting next to. Say, are you a praiser? Come on, ask them. Say, are you a praiser? Because I think it's just polite to warn people who they sitting next to. Look, say, if praise makes you uncomfortable, you may want to change your seat tonight because you're sitting next to a praiser and every now and then I have praise fits look at somebody and say every now and then I tend to have a praise fit because when I think about the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me my soul cries out now, 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 some people, their feet cry out and their souls do nothing. But look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I just want you to know, my soul is doing more than my feet. God, look at your neighbor and say, this ain't no pretty praise. This ain't no cute praise. Because when my soul gets over full, I just have spontaneous combustion. And i got to show out what God is doing on the inside. Woo! Hallelujah. Now we got a preacher. I told him, I said, if he wasn't going to South Carolina, I would ask him to stay Sunday. <laughs> Lord have mercy. Y'all be seated. I want to give these young men a chance to, to say, man, if they done got mics already, Lord have mercy. All right. We're going to start. Come on. Tell them who you are.
Um, tell them what church you belong to and tell them what God did for you. Um, hello, praise the Lord, everybody. My name is Kayshawn Cooper Jr. and um, I received the gift of the Holy Ghost um, yesterday. Um, ever since vacation Bible school, I've been praying um, intensely and deeply on receiving the gift of the Holy Ghost and um, I ended up I ended up getting it today. And when I got baptized, um, it says in the Bible that when you get baptized by um, the water of Jesus, that you will receive the Holy Ghost. And that shows that God keeps his promises. And I just thank God for everything he does for me. All right. Um, um, hello, um, my name is Kai Clayton, uh, belong to the Covenant House Baltimore, and on yesterday night, um, I was seeking God for the Holy Ghost, for his Holy Spirit, and, um, I just, it was in the back of my head, give up, give up, he's not, he's not coming, he's not coming to save you, he's not, so, I pressed ahead, and I kept going, and I kept going, and I kept going, and I kept going. I kept calling his name, and next thing you know, I'm all, I'm, I'm speaking in different tongues. I can't control my mouth. I'm just giving God praise and thanking Him for everything. And so, I just want to tell you, don't, don't give up. Don't give up on God, because, because He won't give up on you. All right, praise the Lord, church. Um, my name is Aubrey Lee, and I received the gift of the Holy Ghost yesterday. And I just want to say that, like, when like you're in the spirit, sometimes your feet just move you. And when, and I think that um, Pastor Brown and Mother Easily for praying for me and my family, because I think that gave me the extra push. Oh yeah, and I thank God for calling me out to the altar. Praise the Lord, everybody. Of course, I belong to the Carpenter's House. You all basically already know me, but, um, so last night I got the Holy Ghost, and when I, I know I'm going all the way back when I got, when I got baptized, but when I got baptized, I was like, when I came, when I came home, I, I went in the mirror, I was like, I really did it. And I was like, good job. And then, last night, I got the Holy Ghost, and I was like, wow, what a gift. <laughs> and I went home and I looked in the mirror and I was like, devil, you do not know how to stop, do you? You don't want to leave us alone. You want to kill us that bad, but you won't because God loves us. So don't give up. When the devil tells you to stop, don't listen. God has got you. He has his hand on your life and whatever you do, he will still be with you. Keep walking with him and don't give up on him because he won't give up on you. Now, now, without well, stand right there, I want to let you know what we're doing. The responsibility of the pastor is to equip them for the work of the ministry. That's the responsibility of the fivefold ministry to equip them for the work of the ministry. Now that they have the Holy Ghost, what you just saw them doing is testifying to the power that lives inside of them. Now, I just told them to tell the name, the church, and what God gave them. But do you see the Holy Ghost stand up in them and started proclaiming now, telling other people, don't give up, don't throw in the towel, as God filled me, he'll fill you. Look at somebody and say, that sounds like the Holy Ghost. For you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost will come upon you. And you shall be my witnesses. Woo! Hallelujah. Lord have mercy. 
I'm excited about what God going to do through these, these four. Uh, I'm excited about what God going to do. I see God's hand on all of you. And, and I'm excited about what God. Come on, let's give him a round of applause again. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, it's Friday night. Look at somebody say, it's Friday night. It's Friday night. I've got a couple of things I want to do. But I wanted to give these young people the opportunity to testify. It's their service. And guess what? It's nothing like young people motivating other young people. Amen. I'm going to ask Sister Brenda Randall to come at this time. She has a presentation to make. Amen. And uh, I want her to come at this time. She serves with me with the Board of Adjutants. Amen. She is our first sister adjutant in the Way of the Cross Church of Christ. And she's in charge of the women in the adjutancy, and I'm praising God for her. She, I'm going to Atlanta, uh, Lord's will, October the 10th, and she done already booked her flight before I got mine. She said, Bishop, if you're going to Atlanta, I'm going with you, hallelujah. So I thank God for her spirit of service and how she serves uh, this whole entire national body and what she means to this church. Thank you so much. Hallelujah. She's a member of the Bethel Way of the Cross Church of Christ. Amen. Where her pastor is Bishop Donnell Easton. Amen. And she's such a blessing to this house. And I want to say thank you so much. Hallelujah. Her daughter belongs to this church. Along with her family. family. Amen. Family. Hallelujah. Family. Amen. Thank Sister you. Randall, come on. I do honor the Lord today. Um, I give honor to my pastor, Bishop Easton. I give honor to Bishop Easley, to Lady D, my adjutant general. And I've actually seen Sherry. Sherry's got multiple jobs. She's over there tonight <laughs> working. But um, we also we gave um, Elder Miller and Lady Sherry their gift last Sunday, but we also had something else for them. Sherry actually has it now, but it was an honor to actually serve them. I praise God for this man of God tonight. I, I just, to God be the glory. I thank you, Bishop, for allowing me to serve under you and to work beside you and to work everything that we do is unto the Lord, but thank you. But I thank God for Lady Sherry, truly a woman of God. It was an honor to be just even a blessing to her. So saints, let's continue to pray for one another as we go forth in this service. I came expecting something from the Lord. So who's going to be next? I, 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 was going, I came two hours up the road. Not to see who was here, but I want to see who is the next. Who is next? Because all the angels in heaven rejoice when one soul repents. So God bless you and thank God for allowing me to be a part of your service tonight, Bishop. Thank God for you. God bless you. God bless you. So Lady Sherry has already been blessed. Amen. With her gift. Is Sister Raina here? Amen. Wave your hand, Sister Raina. Stand up, honey. Hallelujah. She came all the way down from New Jersey. Hallelujah. She's usually here with us on Sunday, but she wanted to be in she wanted to be in revival. Hallelujah! Came all the way here last night. Lord have mercy, I didn't see you last night, but come down all the way from New Jersey from last night. What a blessing! And I thought, Amen, that we should give her that kind of honor because she pressed her way. Hallelujah! To be here tonight, Amen. We praise God for your sacrifice and what you are doing. So if Sister Raina can come all the way from New Jersey, tell somebody, say, cut your complaining out. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. Sister Randall can come all the way two hours away. Cut your complaining out. Uh, Sister Tita can come all the way from Woodbridge, Virginia to be here with us today. Cut your complaining out. And is that Diggin' Payton? Uh, oh, Lady Easton is here. Where are you at, Lady Easton? All right, and Diggin' Payton, all the way down here from New Jersey. God bless you, Diggin'. Good to see you and your wife and Diggin' Payton. I ain't trying to cut service off. Wait. But I had something last night. Well, no, no, what? Well, since you're talking, uh, we got a virtual audience that needs to see you. Come on. 
Hallelujah. Since you're talking. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Somebody give him a mic. Praise the, praise the Lord, everybody. I watched this service last night in New Jersey. I couldn't contain myself. And I shook and I shake and I shook. But I said, it ain't nothing like praising God when you're amongst the saints. And I got to praise and I got to let it out. What did David say? I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Look at somebody say, you ain't been saved that long. You know on Friday night, you were just getting ready to go out. So come on, this is young people's night. This is young people's night. Can we just come and have a good time? Let's take the brakes off. Don't watch the clock. Let's just have a great time in the Lord. And I believe God's going to do something wonderful for us today. But this is what I come to do. This is my assignment tonight. My assignment today is to receive an offering. Not to raise an offering, but to what? Receive an offering. The reason why I say that because revival is not a fundraiser. Look at your neighbor say revival is not a fundraising service. I've learned that sometimes people get it mixed up and they put conferences on and revival services as a response to a fundraiser. And so it's not a fundraising service. It is a service that we honor God for him to bring us back to right relationship and to restore us back to the place in which we have drifted away from. And last night, this preacher came in here. He preached and he preached and he preached and he preached until yokes were broken Demons were challenged and demons had to let folks go that they would be free. I've been receiving phone calls all day long. Amen of what the word has done for them. The Bible says he sent his word and his word healed them. Not the singing, not the music, but it is the word of God that sets us free. So as long as God allows me to be the pastor of this church, this church will be a word church. Whatever we do, we're going to do more word than we do anything else. Because it's the word that sets us free. It's the word that helps us. And I just want to thank you for allowing your palates to be changed for to be a lover of the word. Come on, look at somebody say, I'm a lover of the word. We're such lovers of the word over here, uh, Pastor Brown, that oftentimes we forget to take offering. Many times people ask me, say, did you take offering? And it's amazing to me that you love the word so much that you don't stop giving even though we may not have a particular set aside time to raise offering. But today the Lord shared with me that I need some partners tonight. We haven't really raised an offering for the last two days. Last two days we haven't really raised an offering. I don't call speakers in to raise money. I've never done it. If they do it, it's because the Lord led them. But I don't require, we don't have a conversation in the back saying, Doc, this is how much money I need. They don't come here to raise their money because tithing and offering takes care of that. However, the Lord blessed us in such a way on yesterday that I thought it would be robbery that I didn't give you the opportunity 
to sow into this atmosphere. So today the Lord told me what to sow. And I want a couple people that can. Now listen, I want you to understand I've been in church a long time. So I don't want your rent money. I don't want your car money. I don't want your grocery money. Are you hearing me? This is not me to make you feel bad and feel under pressure and then all of a sudden you don't have no rent money or no mortgage money when you leave church. I think we're educated people and if I'm not talking to you, I'm not talking to you. You do the best you can. But some of you, God has blessed immensely. Some of you, God has blessed for such a time as this. And the Lord shared something with me today. Uh, and, uh, and I want as many people again. The Lord said there's at least 10 of you here that can do this. But uh, I'm going to share a $200 seed tonight. Um, and there's about 10 of you that can stand with me tonight. Amen. And I'm just doing this uh, not to call your name out because I'm not going to do that. Amen. But standing with Pastor, God's glory hit this place in such a way. And we also have to learn that when God does something, that we respond by saying thank you. And so today, if you can, if you can, if you can, I need a few people to stand with me with $200 tonight. Thank you, hallelujah. Amen, thank you, thank you, hallelujah. Thank you, thank you. It doesn't take long to do this. Hallelujah, thank you, hallelujah, hallelujah. There's a few more people that I need, amen, to come and do this. And uh, I was about to call you Bishop Brown, hallelujah. Pastor Brown, said something about I'm leaving the threshing the wine press and I'm going to the altar and I saw this in my spirit last this this morning I saw people coming to the altar and bringing their gift and I know that most of us electronically give and those individuals that are watching me right now you can give as well so I want you to bring me the basket. Bring me the basket. And I want to put it right here at this altar. No gimmicks, no jokes, no tricks. I don't have them. Uh, God has done too much for me to play games with him. Amen. But as you know, we like to bless the man of God. We like to do things right. Amen. And so that's what you're doing. This is not a fundraiser. Amen. This is a blessing for the house. So those individuals that said that you're going to come and you're going to bless us I want with the gift that I asked first. I want you to come and just touch this basket, even with your phone. I just want you to come, amen, as a sign that I'm leaving the wine press and I'm coming to the altar. Even with my gift, I'm coming to the altar. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, come on. Elder Easley said, hallelujah, his is taken care of. Hallelujah. Thank you, Elder Easley is watching online. Thank you, Elder Easley. Amen. Thank you. 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 God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Those individuals that will join me with a hundred dollar seed. You may can't do two hundred, but you can do a hundred tonight. Come on. Hallelujah. Let's be a blessing to the man of God. We never call people into this house without being a blessing to them. It's it's rude. It's rude to eat and don't pay the bill. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Amen. If you can, come on. Hallelujah. Join us today and let's sow seed into the house of the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you for your gifting. Thank you for what you're doing. Listen, now I'm going to ask anybody who has a gift, whether electronic or not,
Cash App. Thank you, Mother Green. Thank you. Hallelujah. Let's praise God for Mother Green being here with us. Anybody who has a gift tonight, I want you to come and I want you to put it in this basket. God knows your heart. God knows what you have. Hallelujah. Try your best to get closest to what I ask. Amen. Whatever it is. Hallelujah. Come on. Whatever it is. Hallelujah. That means everybody should be moving. Uh, amen. Sister Smith says she got her 200. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Anything you got, it doesn't matter. It does, as long as you're giving it from your heart. If you're not giving it from your heart, you can hold on to it. Hallelujah. God bless you, Mother. God bless you. 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 Somebody bring me my phone. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. God bless you. I want to see you high and live. Thank you. Oh, pour out your power on us as we sing holy hope. I want to see you high and live. Sister Sherry is giving a hundred, working in the kitchen. God bless. Pour out your power on us as we Thank you. Now, come on, let's praise God. Everybody sticking your hand this way. Come on. We place this basket on the altar. This place that we have set aside in this house. We know that the altar is in our hearts. But God, we just signify that we're placing our gifts on the altar. Many of us have made money our gods. And God, we're taking that back and we're sowing into the vineyard. Forgive us where we've been out of order. Forgive us where we have not put you first. And God glorified you. Because everything we have has come from you. So thank you for those that you've given seed to sow. And I thank you for those who have a heart to sow, but don't have the means. We know the next time that we shall come together like this, you will have increased their ability to sow and they'll be able to sow into the kingdom of God. Father, I thank you for these two vessels this week that you have sent Bishop Dimery, and also, hallelujah, Elder Brown, to be a blessing to this house. Now, God, our desire is to be a blessing to them as well. Father God, this is not a fundraiser, but God, we can't pay for the message that we receive. But God, all we can do is help them to get to the next place. So Lord, I thank you for the gifts that we have received in this house. And God, we give you praise for it because we know that better days are coming. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. If you believe better days are coming, come on, let's celebrate Jesus. Come on, let's celebrate Jesus. Let's celebrate Jesus. I want to say to my virtual audience, please don't be an individual who steals cable or steals Netflix or peep into the broadcast 
and don't sow something. At least sow something. Are you hearing me? Those of you that are watching also, just because you're not here, doesn't mean you should not sow. So get used to sowing, even if you're watching. Amen? God bless you. God bless you. I've said enough. Amen. I'm going to get out of the way that this wonderful man of God will come and bless us. Hallelujah. Because I've done this long enough. Hallelujah. I just wanted to get the offering out of the way. I wanted to get all of that out of the way so we can just go on and have church. Amen. Because it is a part of our worship. Look at somebody say, giving is a part of our worship. It is a part of our worship. And so I wanted to make sure this final night that I had the opportunity, amen, to, amen, receive, not raise, but receive an offering, amen, from the people of God. So thank you. All we need the preacher to do is preach the word of God. Hallelujah. Amen. And work with these souls, amen, that these souls might be, hallelujah, blessed. Now, I want you to know, Brother Arbery is getting baptized in Jesus' name today. <laughs> hallelujah. And I believe his mom is here along with grandma and everybody. Amen. That's why he didn't get baptized last night. Amen. Because he wanted his mom to witness what God was going to do in his life. But I understand he got home and his sister Aubrey, uh, Chloe, said, I too want to be baptized in Jesus' name. Where's Sister Chloe? Hallelujah. Sister Chloe, you sitting too far back there. Hallelujah. Amen. Come on up. Come on up. Come on up here, Sister Chloe. Hallelujah. Y'all, praise team, y'all may have to relocate. This is for my children this morning, today. Hallelujah. I want them close to the fire so the fire don't have to skip over and find them. She needs the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Amen. And I believe that God can save your whole house. Tell somebody, say, he can save your whole house. Your whole entire house. So the next voice that we're going to hear immediately after Amen. Our fine arts ministry, as they have been ministering all week, our fine arts ministry is coming. And the very next voice that you will be hearing is from our guest revivalist. Amen. Who certainly needs no introduction. He's been here before. He was here last night and he will be coming back. Hallelujah. As long as he preaching Jesus like he preaching, I have one stipulation preach Jesus and he did that well on last night did he not did he not hallelujah and I praise God that he heard the voice of the Lord and he spoke to us in such a wonderful way and I thank God for him amen please receive our fine arts ministry who's been ministering all week long and the very next voice you'll be hearing is from our guest revivalist Elder Daryl Spud Brown. God bless you. Receive him in Jesus' name. This is our heart's cry. We need you. Oh, how we need you. Oh, how we need you. Oh, oh, oh. we need you. Hey, oh, how we need you. Oh, and say
time I don't have words and all I can say is oh, 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 oh. Let the melody of the spirit fill the house. Oh, 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 oh.
on, do you believe it tonight? He's the God who speaks to waves and wind. He's the God who splits the seas of your circumstance. He takes you over. He takes you over. He takes you over. You don't have to swim through it. You can walk on He takes you over, he takes you over, every obstacle, yeah, he takes you over, he takes you over, he takes you over, he takes you through, yeah. I just need a few people who know that your enemies are gonna drown. Gracious God, we thank you because you are the Alpha and Omega. You are the beginning and the end. You are the creator and the sustainer of the universe. God, we thank you for your power. We thank you for your spirit. We thank you, God, for troubling the waters. Now, God, we understand and we realize that where we sit and where we stand is holy ground. So, God, tonight we take off our shoes. We lay aside every weight that so easily besets us. Every mindset that's not like you, we take it off. Every worry that's not like you, we take it off. Every problem, everything that would hinder us from hearing your voice, God, we take it off tonight because you have declared this is holy ground. So God, here I stand inadequate and insufficient for the assignment that you have given me. So God, I pray that your anointing that destroys yokes would make the difference. God, my prayer tonight is simply let the oil flow. God, we believe that you are the God of miracles, signs, and wonders. And so we approach your throne with expectation of what you are going to do tonight. We believe that bodies will be healed. Tumors will shrink. Oh God, we believe that the fire of the Holy Ghost will rest on us again. And we shall forever give your name the glory, the honor, and the praise. Do me a favor, clap your hands. Clap your hands, open up your mouth. Clap your hands, open up your mouth. Come on, come on, come on. I said clap your hands, open up your mouth. I say clap your hands, open up your mouth, and let's bless the name of the Lord. Great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised in the city of our God and on the mountain of his holiness. Uh, would you do me a favor? Be seated in the presence of God. Montez, do me one favor. Turn me up just a little bit in the monitors right here. Uh, Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised in the city of our God and in the mountain of his holiness. I will bless the Lord at all times. 
and his praises shall continue to be in my mouth would you look at the neighbor and say neighbor it's good to see you in the house tonight say neighbor it's good to see you in the house tonight it's good to see you in the house tonight i certainly do honor uh, the spirit and the presence of god i honor uh, this great man of God who has uh, welcomed me into his family, into his heart, uh, who means so much to me. Would you do me a favor? Would you carpet this house, stand on your feet, and let's honor God for the Honorable Bishop Melvin Easley. Bishop, I love you. I love you. I thank God for you. While you're clapping your hands, let's clap your hands for Lady Easley because she has welcomed us we love you lady easily thank you so much and do me a favor clap your hands for your neighbor clap your hands for your neighbor say neighbor neighbor i honor you too i honor you too for i do believe be seated in the presence of god i i do believe that everybody in the house of god is worthy of both honor and respect and so uh, each and every one of you familiar faces and those who I'm seeing for the first time I do honor you I honor God for my leaders uh, my pastor Bishop elect Neil O'Brien Gross and Pastor Alethean Gross uh, for releasing me to fulfill this assignment I honor God for my father and my mother my wife is here I thank God for her Lady Tara Brown come on clap your hands I honor my wife. I honor you. I honor my wife. Uh, I thank God uh, again. Uh, my brother RC was with me last night, but uh, my brother Curtis is here with me tonight. Thank God for him. Again, uh, again, it is it is a blessing to have a brother's bishop who simply say we won't let you go alone. And, Curtis has has traveled with me everywhere and I thank God for him and what God is doing in his life that's Deacon Curtis Pitts it's Deacon Curtis Pitts but uh, he has played with uh, multiple artists who are your favorite artists Ty Tribbett JJ Hairston uh, but it's just a blessing that when I call he answers so I thank God for you man uh, all right uh, uh there is a word from the lord tonight do me a favor uh get your ipads get your bibles uh and let's go to john uh, the 11th chapter um and i want to draw your attention to the 21st through the 27th verse uh, i'm going to be reading from the nrsv version uh, while you get it uh, I need to lay the foundation because uh, Bishop asked me how I slept last night and my wife will tell you, uh, Lady Easley, I didn't sleep at all. I didn't sleep at all. I was so charged uh, by the Holy Ghost and what the Holy Ghost did. Curtis, it, 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 I, I didn't sleep at all. Uh, and so as I bishop was reliving the moment as I was reliving the moment the Holy Ghost said to me okay let it go now oh God what do you mean let it go don't look at the life don't relive it because I'm going to do a new thing tonight. I need to be honest with you. Uh, I don't know what the Lord is going to do tonight. But if it's anything, if he said he's going to do exceedingly and abundantly above what he did last night, he kept speaking the word to me today supernatural kept speaking the word to me today supernatural and so 
for those of you who weren't here last night uh, to tell you how it went uh, if we be honest with you those of us who labored uh, with the young men and those who were being set free and got the Holy Ghost we were actually late to the party because Curtis as I was preaching and as we were surrendering we looked around and the Holy Ghost had grabbed them and it was nothing I mean we looked this way and they was going crazy I looked over this way and they, nobody had to lay hands on them I looked back that way and so listen to me the Holy Ghost just told me to tell you that the water is still troubled tonight and if you got anything you need from God look at a neighbor and say neighbor you in the right place tonight uh -huh. look at another neighbor on the other side and say neighbor if you got something that you need from God you in the right place tonight you in the right place tonight and so we go we gonna preach the word and the Lord gonna do what he wants to do but I'm just putting you on notice that at any moment at any moment if you set your heart and your affections on God uh, the Holy Ghost can overtake you can baptize you can engulf you in the twinkling of and I, I just want to I just I just want to give you notice so when you see the Holy Ghost begin to move don't ask what's the matter with me huh? so I am expecting God uh, to do something supernatural John chapter 11 beginning at the 21st verse Martha said to Jesus Lord if you had been here my brother would not have died but even now I know that God will give you whatever you ask of him verse 23 says Jesus said to her your brother will rise again Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Messiah, the son of God, the one coming into the world. I want to lift up in your hearing for your attention tonight. Verse 25. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live. We might as well close it with verse 26 and everyone who lives and believes in me will never die do you believe this uh, i, I want to preach to you from this thought tonight if you would help me preach just for the next few moments uh, look at your neighbor and say neighbor the i am just showed up uh, look at the neighbor on the other side and say neighbor the I am just showed up would you do me a favor prophesy to somebody across the aisle and say hey there neighbor I got a word straight from the Lord the I am just showed up now if you believe it clap your hands open up your mouth and bless the name of the lord I, I promise you it will all make sense after a while 
uh, the Lord would have me to uh, share with you tonight uh, a little of what we touched on last night is that he wants to increase your understanding and your revelation of who he is. Uh, one of the things that I have uh, over the past year and in this season that I'm in had to wrestle with Bishop is the sovereignty of God. What do you mean by sovereignty? Uh, God being sovereign means that he is supreme. Uh, he has all power. He, ha he is all knowing. Uh, his sovereignty suggests to us that he is above reproach. He is above critique. God's ways cannot be questioned because however he decides to carry out his will is the best possible way. Uh, it's a wrestle when we think about the sovereignty of God because on one end of the spectrum, I come to the understanding of how out of control I really am. Mm -hmm. I come to the understanding that in the grand scheme of things, Bishop, I am not in control. It's a hard reality to accept, but for the believer... On the other end of the spectrum, we are called to rest in the fact that although I am not in control, God is in control. And he says that everything works out for the good of those. Listen to the requirements because we quote the text without quoting the requirements who love the Lord and who are called according to his purpose. And so you need to understand that God, in his sovereignty, there are no accidents, there are no coincidences in God. But everything that God does has purpose and intent. Uh, God does nothing by coincidence. He has no oopses. But everything that he does has purpose and intent. So the first thing I need you to understand is that God in his sovereignty, he manipulated the events. You are not here by accident or coincident, but there is purpose and intent behind your presence here tonight. The fact that you are sitting in your seat, the fact that you are watching us online should suggest to you that there is something supernatural that God wants to do in your life tonight. I'm going to ask you, as the scripture says, do you believe this? It's something that God wants to do in your life tonight. Uh, he says to tell you that uh, your seasonal dilemma does not equate to a dilemma of your destiny. I'm going to say it again so it gets in your spirit. Your seasonal dilemma, uh, where you find yourself right now, that situation, that circumstance, it does not equate to a dilemma of your destiny. Uh, would you consider perhaps that God in his sovereignty has manipulated the events in your life simply uh, to provide a circumstance to give you a brand new revelation of who he is? Uh, would you consider that God in his sovereignty has manipulated the events and what you're dealing with is simply glory that's wrapped in affliction. Uh, look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I don't know what it is, uh, but the Holy Ghost told me to tell you it ain't nothing but glory wrapped in affliction. The Holy Ghost sent me here to tell you tonight uh, that he's getting ready to show up in your life and he's getting ready to reveal himself to you like you have never experienced him before. 
Uh, one of the things as a young man uh, that I have always admired about the fathers and the mothers, it is very evident to me, Bishop, that they knew Jesus for themselves. Mm -hmm. I know we think it's outdated. I know we try to push out, uh, them out the door to, uh, to be relevant, but it is evident to me uh, that they knew the power that was in his name. Uh, what also becomes evident to me, Curtis, is they did not have the information or the knowledge uh, that we have today. They didn't know all the big words that we call him today. Uh, they didn't know all the Greek and the Hebrew. But what they did was they named him based on their experience. Mm -hmm. um, whether they called him a burden bearer. Mm -hmm. uh, they called him a heavy load sharer. They, they called him a heart fixer, a mind regulator, a doctor in the sick room, a lawyer in the courtroom. They called him a battle axe. They would say, I tried him for myself and I know he's all right they it was their experience with God as we discussed last night uh, that brought about their revelation of God it was as the scripture declared they had been through the flood and the waters uh, did not overtake them they had been been through the fire and they had not been burned uh, do me a favor check your row ask your neighbor say neighbor do you know him uh, neighbor do you know him we talked about what happens when you have a generation who does not know God uh, everybody says they're saved but my question again tonight is uh, where is the devotion uh, oh yes Jesus says not everyone who says to me Lord Lord shall enter into the kingdom of heaven uh, he says some gonna come to me and say Jesus but we prophesied uh, we cast out devils we cast out demons uh, and we did wonders in your name the bible says elder brown didn't say it the bible says that jesus will say depart from me because i never knew you gnosko I, we never had experience together we never had relationship you you had no devotion to me and so he says i'm going to say depart from me because i never knew you i sure neighbor say neighbor do you know him uh, uh, say well then you better act like you know him uh, you you got to act like you know him and so God uh, he says he wants to bring authenticity and validity to your confession I'm going to say it again he says I'm going to bring authenticity and validity to your confession he says I'm going to show you that I am that I am uh, he says through your experiences through your situations uh, through your circumstances I'm going to prove uh, myself to you and so I promise you I'm walking to the text it's in Exodus chapter 3 where Moses asked God maybe one of the most pivotal questions in the entire biblical text uh, uh, Moses says uh, God if I go to the children of Israel and they ask me what your name is what should I tell them God responds to him he says tell them that I am that I am mm -hmm. he says tell them that the I am sent you to them and so we must understand the significance of Moses's question and God's answer uh, Moses essentially asked what is your name uh, uh, because you need to understand that the name of the deity is not simply a label or a title uh, but the name of God speaks of his very essence uh, the name of God speaks of his character uh, the name of God speaks to his power uh, it speaks 
speaks of his authority. That's why you got to understand the significance and the power when you call on the name of Jesus. Uh, 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 to call on the name of God was uh, to appeal to the very nature of who he is. Uh, and if it's who he is, uh, then it's what he does. Uh, uh, you need to understand there is no situation in your life, uh, nothing that you can experience in the earth, uh, in an area where his name is not significant. Uh, there's nothing you can experience in your life uh, that you can use the name. Uh, and let me tell you something. There's still power uh, in his name. His name is not depleted. Uh, his name has not run out. His name is not empty. Uh, but everything that you need uh, is in the name. Somebody look at your neighbor and say, do you know him? Uh, uh, you better act like you know him. Uh, I know they call us those Jesus only folk. Uh, yes, I'm Jesus only folk because the Bible declares uh, that there is no other name under heaven uh, whereby men must be saved. Uh, uh, there's still power in his name. Uh, as they called his name last night, he answered them. Uh, as they lifted their hands last night and said Jesus I surrender to you uh, they did not call for naught but he answered them uh, and I'm just saying to tell somebody tonight that if you would dare uh, to call his name tonight uh, one thing I can guarantee you uh, is that he will answer uh, and so here it is Moses asked him what is your name uh, uh, number one Moses he needs a name uh, that will bring validity to his call uh, uh, number two he needs a name uh, uh, that will speak to the Israelite situation uh, uh, the Israelites are in bondage they need deliverance uh, they need a deliverer uh, they need a name that speaks to the God's delivering power. Uh, God does not oblige him, uh, uh, but he says, tell them I am that I am. Uh, uh, because God cannot be constricted or constrained. Uh, it would take us all of the words from Genesis to Exodus to describe a peace of God. Uh, he says, Moses, tell him I am that I am or uh, I will be what I will be. Uh, he says, I'm the same God who revealed myself to your forefathers uh, and as the events unfold, uh, I'm going to reveal myself to you. Uh, he says, tell him that I am that I am or I will be what I will be uh, whenever I decide decide to be he says and if I decide to change my being he says tell him I still am because I was there before the beginning be ever began to be and I will be here when the end has come and gone he says tell them that I am in other words what he says is Moses tell them that whatever they need me to be in whatever situation they need me to be it uh, he says I will be uh, and I just need to tell somebody that whatever tonight uh, you need him to be uh, he says that I will be he says tell them that I am uh, and so you he says you're going to learn the meaning of my name uh, I'm going to pull the scales off of your eyes uh, I'm going to peel the layers back uh, and I'm going to reveal who I am to you uh, uh, this speaks of God's immutability uh, uh, in other words God 
Unch being unchanging uh, uh, God does not change he does not evolve he does not grow but what he does is is he reveals uh, I'm going to say it again God does not change the Bible declares uh, that he is the God who was uh, the God who is uh, and the God who is to come uh, he does not evolve he does not grow uh, but what he does is he reveals uh, he lets us know who he is uh, and he says tonight I, I want to give you a tangible experience uh, that you have never experienced before I, I don't care how long you've been saved uh, you don't have a monopoly on God uh, I don't care how long you've been filled with the Holy Ghost uh, you only understand a piece of God uh, and he says, I'm still able uh, to pull the layers back uh, to show you who I am. Uh, he says, because the truth is, some of us, uh, we only have a relationship with him uh, that's of face value. Uh, uh, we, we don't really know who he is. Uh, we're in the shallow end of the pool. Uh, but he says, tonight I'm calling you into the deep deep in. I'm calling you into deep waters. I'm going to broaden your understanding of who I am. And so he says to prophesy to you and tell you don't you dare misinterpret the events in your life. I'm going to say it again. Don't you dare misinterpret the events of your life. This ain't got nothing to do with the devil this ain't got nothing to do with the enemy but this is an opportunity for revelation I'm going to say it again this is an opportunity for God to step into your sickness to step into your situation to step into your circumstance and show you who he is he says tell them that the I am is getting ready to show up and so here it is the ultimate revelation Bishop of the I am is when God decides to wrap himself in flesh and step into the human experience y'all know what the Bible says and thou shalt bring forth a son and you shall shall call his name uh, we see a direct reference to the I am in the book of John uh, and so you need to understand the book of John is one that's very unique in the synoptic gospels uh, it's different from Matthew Mark and Luke those are the synoptics uh, John stands all on its own uh, John is very unique see Matthew he writes Rights to Jewish readers mm -hmm. uh, because Matthew wants his audience to understand that this is the one who's been prophesied about through the scriptures I promise y'all I'm coming and so that's why when you read Matthew chapter 1 he starts with Jesus's earthly lineage uh, because he has to prove to his Jewish readers uh, that this is the one we've been been waiting for all these years. Huh? Luke simply wants to write an accurate account of the gospel. Mark is the first one to write the gospel and then John he is very clear on why he writes. Huh? If you look at John chapter 20 verse 31 he says I've written all these things so that you may believe. Huh? Huh? What is John trying to convince us to believe uh, that Jesus is God wrapped in flesh uh, that he's both fully human and he's fully divine uh, that's why unlike Matthew John does not stand 
start with uh, the earthly lineage of Jesus. Uh, but John starts the book like this. In the beginning, uh, I feel God here. I promise y'all I'm coming. Uh, he says, in the beginning was the word. Uh, and the word was God. Uh, and the word was with God. Uh, he goes on to check the flesh and he says, uh, the word became flesh and he made his dwelling he he pitched his tent he tabernacled among us john wants you to understand who he is he does not want you to be ignorant of the fact of who jesus is and so as a consequence john does not focus on what miracles jesus does matthew mark and luke they focus on miracles jesus turns water into wine but what john focuses on is john focuses on signs he calls them signs because it's through the signs lady easily that they reveal who he is i promise y'all i'm coming i feel like preaching i i didn't have no energy when i walked in here but i feel the holy ghost uh, it's through the signs uh, uh, that john writes about uh, it opens our eyes uh, uh, to show who he is uh, uh, they reveal his divinity uh, through what he does uh, his divinity is revealed uh, through his actions uh, and so if you look at the book of john what you will find is uh, there is a point early in the book where the jews uh, they get upset with jesus uh, uh, because what jesus does uh, is he declares himself to be the i am uh, that declared himself to be the i am in exodus uh, uh, jesus who is fully god and fully human uh, but whom they only view as a human being uh, equates himself Self to the I am. Uh, uh, and so they come to him and say, Jesus, uh, what sign are you going to give us uh, so that we may believe who you say you are? Uh, they say, Our fathers ate manna from heaven. Uh, uh, Jesus says, No, you, you don't understand. Uh, he says, I am the bread of life. Uh, uh, he goes on through the book of John and says, I am the light of the world he says I am the door he says I am the good shepherd and where we find him in John chapter 11 he says I am the resurrection and the life I'm going to get out of here soon and we're going to work the text but would you look at the neighbor and prophesy to your neighbor and say neighbor he is Mm. Uh, uh, he is uh, uh, he is the totality of life and being uh, uh, and so here we are in John chapter 11 uh, the Bible says that there is a man from Bethany named Lazarus uh, and Mary and Martha sent word to Jesus and said Jesus listen here uh, the one whom you love is sick uh, listen to the first thing Jesus does. Uh, uh, he says this sickness is not unto death uh, uh, but it's for the glory of God uh, that the son might be glorified through it. Uh, he says this thing is not unto death but it's for the glory of God. Uh, understand that glory doxa in the Greek this does not refer to praise uh, this does not refer to adoration uh, but it refers to his self revelation uh, and so in other words Jesus says this sickness is not unto death uh, but it's for the revelation of God uh, that the son might be revealed through it uh, oh God uh, uh, Oh, yes Lord uh, Jesus doesn't do signs in the book of John for praise uh, he does them so that he can reveal 
reveal who he is. And so the Bible says that he receives the news and he stays where he is for two more days. John is very careful how he paints this picture. He's very careful how he writes this book. He, he lets us know that Lazarus is the one whom Jesus loved. Uh -huh. Jesus has relationship with Mary and Martha. They are not strangers to Jesus, but they call him, and in their calling him, they expect him to come right away. Uh, this is not the Syrophoenician woman who's calling out to Jesus, uh, and Jesus tells her, it's not right for me to take the children's bread uh, and throw it to dogs. This is not blind Bartimaeus, uh, uh, who's on the side of the road shouting, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. But these are women uh, who have relationship with him. They follow Jesus. They subscribe to his teachings. Uh, and they have access to him. Uh, see, mother, they make the mistake of believing uh, that Jesus will be partial to them uh, because of their relationship with him. Uh, uh, they believe that Jesus should come right away uh, because Lazarus is the one whom Jesus loves. Uh, uh, it is this love that should cause Jesus uh, to drop everything he's doing and come to the rescue. They call him because they believe that if Jesus shows up in the nick of time, that he can turn it around. Have you ever found yourself in a place where you feel as though you've been faithful to God? You're doing all that you can to serve God, but God ain't no where to be found. Uh, have you ever found yourself in a place uh, where you're doing everything you can to live right? Uh, doing everything you can to please God? Uh, and you got other people out here who ain't trying to live no kind of life uh, and they out here living their life like it's golden. Uh, uh, if anybody in here ever find themselves in a place uh, where they said, I'm tired of crying, uh, I'm tired of sleepless nights I'm tired of tossing and turning I've been calling him and he ain't showed up yet my question that I want to pose to you is what do you do and how do you respond when God allows you to die I'm going to say it again the Bible says that they call for Jesus and Jesus does not come right away and Lazarus dies. What do you do when God, he allows you to experience the very thing that you prayed against? How do you respond when you've been calling on God, asking him to bring you out and he says, no, you got to endure. How do you respond when you say, God, bring me out of it? But he says, no, I'm making you go through it. Montez, who do we pray to for deliverance when it ain't got nothing to do with the devil, but it's God? Who do we pray to, Bishop? Who do we seek to bring us out of it when God says, I'm not going to bring you out of it yet, but you got to stay right there in it. Uh, see, one thing I'm beginning to understand uh, in my walk with God uh, is that you can't pray everything away. Uh, all right. Uh, you can't pray everything away. Uh, you can't bind everything. Uh, it's going to be some things uh, in your walk with God uh, that you go going to have to endure. Uh, he says, endure hard as a 
good so I wish I had some Bible readers in here what do you do when it's God who do you pray to when God says you got to go through it I need to know do I have anybody in here who would decree and declare come what may hell or how water I will bless the Lord at all times I feel God here and his praise shall continually be in my mouth I dare you to clap your hands open your mouth and say I will bless the Lord Uh, who do we pray to uh, uh, sister Randall uh, when God says uh, you're right where uh, I want you to be uh, he says I'm not going to leave you uh, but it's not your time to come out yet uh, oh, and, but he says after you've suffered uh, a little while uh, oh, the God uh, of all grace is going to perfect oh God oh, after you suffered a little while the God of all grace is going to perfect you he's going to strengthen you and he's going to settle you look at the neighbor and say neighbor settle yourself Oh, and so how do we bind it when God is behind it how do we rebuke something that's all a part of the sovereign's plan and so the Bible says when he hears Lazarus is sick instead of leaving immediately what he does is is he releases a word he says this thing ain't unto death but it's for the glory of God he leaves Lazarus to endure Jesus says you're not going to die here this is not final this is not your final resting place but it's for the glory of God and I need to stop here and prophesy to somebody that even if you find yourself in a place uh, where you have to experience uh, what you prayed for him to deliver you from uh, he told me to tell you uh, that this is not your deathbed uh, this is not your demise uh, this place is not final uh, but he says you shall recover uh, uh, you got to understand uh, that if he allows you to go through it uh, he's got the power uh, to bring you out of it uh, you got to understand if he allows you to die uh, he's got the power to raise you up again uh, if he allows you to lose it uh, he's got the power and the authority uh, to give you double uh, for your trouble look at the neighbor and say neighbor you shall recover Oh God, I've been hearing that word in my spirit all day. Resurrection and recovery. Oh God, I know you got to endure. You don't know how you're going to make it out of this. But he says to tell you that you shall recover. Oh God, he says this is not your demise. This place is not final uh, you got to understand that Jesus is very calculated uh, he makes a conscious and a calculated decision uh, to stay where he is the text says for two more days uh, oh God uh, he literally set the stage uh, for the supernatural to take place uh, and he said I know it's hard where you are uh, 
he says but I've set the stage he says the stage is set ain't nothing left for you to do your mama can't help you your daddy can't help you your grandmama and your granddaddy can't help you bishop can't even change this he says but the stage is set for the I am to show up in your life look at the neighbor and say neighbor the I am uh, just showed up uh, and so here it is the Bible says uh, that he stays where he is uh, and Lazarus dies mm -hmm. uh, the Bible says that after two days uh, uh, Jesus says to the disciples he says all right now uh, let us go to Bethany because Lazarus uh, has fallen asleep uh -huh. uh, the disciples say to him Jesus if he has uh, fallen asleep uh, then he will get better uh, uh, the Bible says Jesus has to speak plainly to them uh, he says listen here uh, Lazarus is dead uh, and he says I'm glad I was not there uh, oh, let me say it again uh, he says Lazarus is dead uh, and I'm I'm glad I was not there so that you may believe Jesus what are you saying this is the one whom you love what do you mean that you are glad that you were not there see here is what we must come to understand and it is a difficult thing for us to digest but God takes pleasure in in his will I'm going to say it again he takes pleasure in his will over your emotions over your tears over how you feel he's partial to his will and so when he says I'm glad I was not there what Jesus is saying is everything is going according to plan I know Mary and Martha are hurt. I know Mary and Martha are crying. I know Lazarus had to experience death. But if they hold on just a little while longer, I'm going to reveal myself to them. He says, I'm glad I was not there. Because what this has presented is an opportunity for revelation. Uh, it's revealed an opportunity uh, for me to open their eyes uh, he says let's go y'all because he's dead uh, uh, but I got some work to do uh, and the Lord told me to tell you I know you're in a hard place uh, I know you have to endure uh, but while this may be a season of endurance uh, this is also a season of revelation uh, don't you miss uh, this revelation from God uh, oh God uh, he says I stayed my hand uh, I left you where you were uh, so that I could reveal uh, myself to you uh, uh, see you got to understand they believed uh, that it was his love uh, that should have compelled him to come uh, but in reality uh, it was his love uh, that made him stay where he was uh, for two more days uh, see he loved them so much uh, that he wanted to reveal himself to them uh, he loved them so much uh, that he wanted to show them who he was uh, and I've come to tell somebody tonight uh, that he loved you so much uh, that he did not come when you called him uh, because he wanted to show you who he was would you do me a favor would you tell a neighbor say neighbor I'm so glad he loved me enough to be late oh God he loved me enough to be late 
He loved me enough, Lady Easley, uh, to make me see it through to the end. Because if I, he would have came when I called him, then I would have missed it all. Some of us in here ought to clap our hands and give God praise that he didn't come when we called. Because if God would have came when we called him, we would have missed the revelation. If God would have gave us what we wanted, we would have ruined it all. If God would have gave me everything that I prayed for, I would have ruined my life. If God would have gave me everything that I prayed for, I would have lost everything. But I'm so glad that he loved me enough to be late. He loved me enough to be late. When I look back over my life and think things over, if he would have gave me what I asked for, I would have ruined my life. I prayed for that job. I prayed for that opportunity. But if he would have gave me what I asked for, I would have missed what was on the other side of my affliction. If he would have gave me what I asked for, it would have been a shipwreck. If he would have gave me what I asked for, Montez, it would have been a disaster. Oh, yes, Lord. I thank God for keeping me, Bishop, from what I wanted. The Bible says now that Lazarus has been dead for four days. Jesus arrives on the scene. He makes a calculated decision to stay where he is. You've got to understand the significance of it being four days. See, Jesus, he waits until it is impossible. Because what the Jews believed was, they believed that when someone died, the spirit hovered around the body looking for reinforcement. Uh, the spirit hovered around the body for three days uh, looking to get back in uh, and so Jesus waits until uh, there is no doubt no question uh, on the fourth day uh, I'm going to show up after your tradition uh, I'm going to show up after your belief uh, he waits until they are at the limit of their understanding of who he is. Uh -huh. He waits until they are at the limit of their revelation. Because when he shows up, he will increase their understanding. See, what you got to understand is that when the I am shows up, he not only does what you need him to do, he's not only is who you need him to be but he increases your revelation he opens your eyes to who he is he opens your eyes to the supernatural and you got to understand for the supernatural to take place in your life it's got to be something that only he can do for the supernatural to be revealed in your life it has to be something that only he can accomplish have you ever found yourself in a place have you ever been in a place in your life where you could not quantify it you could not explain it you could not adequately put it into words all you could say is this wasn't nobody but Jesus I don't know how I got out of that. Wasn't nobody but Jesus. I don't know how that thing got turned around. Wasn't nobody but Jesus. I don't know how the results came back negative. Wasn't nobody but Jesus. I don't know how what the doctor 
doctors thought they saw they see no more it wasn't nobody but Jesus I don't know how I have no explanation the only thing I can say is it wasn't nobody nobody but Jesus if I could give you an explanation I will all I know is I went to the doctor and they said they saw a mass and when I came back again they said we don't know what happened but what we thought we saw is there no more I don't know what happened I can't explain it they told me I had a tax bill I can't explain it but they called me to tell me that my debt had been settled I can't explain it to you the only thing I can say is nobody but Jesus Oh yeah, there wasn't nobody but Jesus. And so now the stage has been set. He waits until is it, it is impossible. Only Jesus can fix this now. He's the only one that can turn this around. Only Jesus can step in. The Bible says that Martha hears that Jesus is coming. And she goes to meet Jesus. And she says, Jesus, if you would have been here, my brother would not have died. Jesus, if you would have just been here, if you would have came when I called you, none of this would have ever happened. Jesus, if you would have been here, I would not experience this pain. And so you got to understand Jesus is about to challenge and stretch her faith. And he's about to give her a brand new revelation. See what you're in. You're focusing on the pain. You're focusing on the hurt. But he says, I'm simply challenging your faith. Challenging your understanding. And I'm about to give you a new revelation. You see, Martha has a confession. She has a confession of faith. But there is an addendum. There is a caveat to her confession. She has a but to her confession. Jesus, I believe you could have done it. I believe you would have done it if you would have been here. She says, I believe I saw you feed 5,000. I saw you heal the lame man. I believe that you can do anything if you would have been here. Uh, but since you were not here, there is nothing that you can do. Oh God, since you were not here, this thing is all over now. This thing is all done with. The time for you to heal has come and gone. But the Holy Ghost told me to tell somebody tonight that you got to take the limits off your faith. You got to take the limits off of God. Do you not know he is the God of miracle signs and wonders? Do you not know we serve a God who specializes in the impossible? And he will do what no other power can do. And so it is the revelation that will undergird her faith. Martha says, but even now, I know that God will give you whatever you ask of him. 
it would seem as though Martha believes and is looking for her brother to raise from the dead but listen to Jesus' response to her Jesus says your brother will rise again Martha said yeah Jesus I know he will rise in the resurrection on the last day come on Curtis I feel God now the Bible says that Jesus says to Martha he says I am the resurrection and I am the life those who believe in me though they may die yet will they live he says everyone who believes in me will never die he says I am the resurrection and I am the life shout glory shout glory again I come to tell somebody that the I am just showed up in your life I come to tell somebody that what you've been looking for what you've been praying for just showed up in your life you ought to clap your hands open up your mouth and shout glory I say clap your hands open up your mouth and shout glory yeah Lord yes the Bible says that Jesus says do you believe this Martha says to Jesus she says I believe that you are the Messiah the Son of God the one coming into the world see Martha makes a mistake she believes the resurrection is an event she believes the resurrection is to come but I need you to understand that the resurrection is not an event but the resurrection is a person he says Martha do you not understand that I am the resurrection and the life I am the resurrection and the life ain't no need to look for a future resurrection because what you're looking for is standing right in front of you ain't no need to look for a resurrection in the last day because the resurrection is here now I just came to tell the carpenter's house that what you've been praying for what you've been believing for what you need is here now he's the I am he's the I am he's the I am and he just showed up in your situation he's the I am and he just showed up in your circumstance he's the I am and he just showed up in your life clap your hands open up your mouth because he's the I am he's the I am he's the I am he's the I am am. clap your hands open up your mouth and shout glory I said clap your hands open up your mouth and shout glory Martha do you not understand that I am everything that you need do you not understand that he is everything that you need everything you pray for everything 
you hope for everything you fast for everything you seek for he says to tell you is here now what you need is here now what you need is here now do you know that we serve a God who specializes in the impossible have you any rivers that seem uncrossable have you any mountains that you cannot tunnel through God 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 specializes and he will do and he will do he will do but no other power but Holy Ghost power can do God specializes God specializes clap your hands open up your mouth and say God specializes clap your hands open up your mouth and say God specializes I say clap your hands open up your mouth and say God specializes and he will and he will and he will and he will I said and he will I said and he will do the impossible in your life I said God specializes I said God specializes clap your hands open up your mouth and shout glory hey I say and he will I say and he will I come to tell somebody that the I am is here now I come to tell somebody tonight that just like he stepped in flesh he just stepped in to your situation I come to tell you tonight that just like he stepped in flesh he just stepped in to your dilemma I come to tell you tonight that just like he stepped in flesh he just stepped in to your circumstance do you know that the I am is here tonight to revive you do you know that the I am is here tonight to restore you do you know that the I am is here tonight to heal you do you know that the I am is here tonight to deliver you do you know I don't think you heard me do you know that the I am is here now to resurrect you he's speaking life to everything that's dead in your life every dead dream every dead vision every dead goal I heard the Lord say that the I am is here now and I've come to breathe life into you tonight and I've come to breathe life into you tonight and I've come to raise you up tonight and I've come to call you up tonight to call you up tonight though you were dead yes yet shall you live though it was dead yet shall it live clap your hands open up your mouth and say I shall live 
said, clap your hands. Prophesy over your own self and say, I shall live. I shall live. I shall live. Yeah, Lord, yes. I shall live. Wave at a neighbor and say, neighbor, I got a word straight from God. Wave at a neighbor and say, neighbor, I got a word straight from heaven. Y'all ain't talking to nobody. Wave at a neighbor. Send some Holy Ghost power. They need to hear this word from God. They need to hear this word from the Lord. Say, neighbor, you shall live and not die. Say, neighbor, you shall live and not die. That was the wrong neighbor. Find another neighbor. Find another neighbor. Wave at that neighbor. Wave at that neighbor. Wave at that neighbor. Wave at that neighbor. And say, neighbor, I got a word straight from God. The Lord told me to tell you that you shall live and not die. That you shall live and not die. That was the wrong neighbor. Tap your old self on the chest. Tap your old self on the chest. Call your own name and prophesy over your own life. Call your name and say you shall live. You shall live. You shall live. You shall live. Lay your hand. Lay your hand. Lay your hand on your chest and decree and declare that I shall live. I shall live. I said, Lay your hand. Lay your hand on your chest and speak to your spirit. Lay your hand on your chest and speak to your heart and say, I shall live. I shall live. I shall live. Lay your hand on your chest. Lay your head on yourself and say, I shall, I shall, I shall live and not die. I shall live and not die. I shall live and not die. I'm gonna live. I'm gonna live. Cancel the funeral because I'm gonna live. Cancel the funeral because I'm gonna live. Cancel the funeral because I'm gonna live. Come what me, I'm gonna live. Come what me, I'm gonna live. Hell of high water. I'm gonna live. Sickness in my body. I'm gonna live. A diagnosis that the doctors don't know what to do. But lay your head. Lay your head. Lay your head on your chest and say, I shall live. I shall live. I shall live. I shall live. This is not my deathbed. This is not final. This is not your demise. This is not your end. But lay your hands. Lay your head on 
on yourself and say I shall I will live I shall I will live I shall I will live open up your mouth and shall live Live through it. Live through it. You will not die in it. But look at a neighbor and say, neighbor, you gonna live through it. Look at a neighbor and say, neighbor, you gonna live through it. Hey, run another cotto. I speak to your spirit. You go live. I speak to your spirit that wants to give up. I speak to your spirit that wants to throw in the towel. I know it's hard, but I come tonight to tell you you go live. I know it's rough. But I come tonight to tell you, you gon' live. I know it hurts. I know it's hard. But I come tonight to tell you, you gon' live. It's time to get up. It's time to get up. It's time to get up off your deathbed. It's time to get up out of that place of depression. It's time to get up out of that place of anxiety. It's time to get up out of that place of suicide. It's time to get up. Come on up. Come on up. Come on up. Come on up. You got to live. You can't die now. It's too much oil left in you. You can't die now. It's too much oil left in you. You can't die now. It's too much work for you to do. You go live. I got to go, y'all. May the Lord God bless you real good. I got to go, y'all. My time is up now. But before I go, I got a word straight from God. And I got to tell you that you gon' live. You gon' live. You gon' live. I say 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 you gon' live. Clap your hands. Open up your mouth. Because the I am is here now. And everything that you need is in his name. Your healing is in his name. Your deliverance is in his name. Your breakthrough is in his name. What you need is in his name. For there's power in the name of Jesus. I dare somebody to open up your mouth and call his name. I dare somebody to open up your mouth and say, Jesus, tell me who can stand me for us when we call on that great name. Open up your mouth. Throw your head back and holla, Jesus! It's 
in his name. It's in his name. Jesus. Jesus. I dare you to take a moment. Clap your hands. Open up your mouth. And call his name. Jesus. Everything you need is in his name. Everything you need is in his name. Clap your hands. Open up your mouth. For Sunday, my heart. No closer to him. Your number whole Sunday. Jesus. She. Hey. Ho. I see him healing you now. I see him healing you now. Let on the little hey. You shall live and not die. You shall live. Look what you be hey. I speak to your spirit. Lord, none of my soul. I come against the enemy that will speak death over your life. I come against the devil that will speak death over your life. And tonight, the I am just showed up and we bind the spirit of premature death. We bind the spirit of premature death. You gon' live. Let God never hate. Let God never hate. Let God never cuto. Let God never cuto. Let God never hate. Let God never hate. Let God never hate. Let God never hate. I feel God here. There it is. There it is. There it is. Let God never hate. Let God never hate. You gon' live. You gon' live. You gon' live. I speak to the sickness and cause it to die. I speak to the sickness and cause it to dry up. You go live. Yeah, Lord, yes. Yeah, Lord, yes. Get your wind back. Get your wind back. No mind the living head. Get your wind back. Look on the behave. You can't die. Because you're anointed to live. I say you can't die. Because you're anointed to live. Uh-huh. There it is. I see her name on my soul. Let me live back on the behave. I don't know what you're waiting for. You better open up your mouth and get what you need. He's here now. He's here now. Though it was dead, yet shall you live. Hey, my soul. The angels huh, ministering to your body. Uh huh. That's right. Let it out. Hey, no closer to hey. No, never been close to the hole. Yeah, never been saw ya. Oh, 